My name is Chris Seelbeck. Uh, I'm from Louisville, Kentucky. I was raised by middle class parents and uh, I came to Cincinnati to go to Xavier and then went to University of Dayton Law School and along the way met a guy named David Crowley who was the vice mayor who kind of inspired most of the things in my life and uh, then went to work for a marketing consulting firm and after the vice mayor David Crowley passed away in 2009 was really inspired to put my name in the hat and so I ran for city council and uh, was elected on my first try. Then, when, when you were young, right. what was your um, idea of the American dream? That what you hope to become is as good or not better than what your parents have. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, what, whatever they have, and you know, in my case they had a lot, uh, it was to become that, but even maybe better. Or, you know, somehow, some way, you know, more educated or more successful or a bigger house or a bigger car or a nicer car. I think all of those things were really what was in my head is what I should become or what my uh, dream should be. Throughout like your experiences, your life experiences, going to school, running for like city council, etc., etc., um, have your experiences changed your idea of the American dream? So much of who I am is that I was this middle class average kid from Louisville, Kentucky who um, was dealt uh, a pretty big obstacle in my life and my relationship with my parents after coming out and through overcoming that, through um, learning from that, through fighting through that, um, really put a spark in me to fight for the fact that the American dream doesn't have to be you know, the answer that Wikipedia gives us, uh, that it can be something else, and that uh, if you work hard and treat people with respect and have good ideas, then the American dream doesn't necessarily have to be a wife and 2.5 kids. That it can absolutely be something else and that still is success. And what are those things that you're doing um, maybe specifically in Cincinnati um, for the American dream, for your American dream, maybe others even? You know, I think my election in itself was a huge milestone. I mean, you have the first openly gay person elected in Cincinnati, mm -hmm. in a city that's historically d had some trouble dealing with these issues, uh, issues relating to gay and lesbian people. And so the fact that we had so many people come out and want to be a part of this campaign, want to be a part of the success of this campaign, and then we were successful, I think that in itself has sent a pretty strong message. Uh, but then, you know, since I was elected and sworn in six and a half months ago, we passed uh, health benefits for all city employees, all 5,000 and something of them, regardless of their sexual orientation or gender identity. So if you're a gay employee, uh, you will now, uh, if you meet certain requirements of, of showing that you're inter financially interdependent with your significant other, you will now be able to extend health and dental and vision benefits to that person. Um, it's huge. So we talked about like what you've done over the past five years. Uh, what about looking into the future? Where is, um, you can say, where's your American dream taking you in the next five or ten years? I think the answer is, I don't know, and that's what I love about it. Uh, so the fact that I don't know where I'm going to be in 10 years makes me fight every day to be the best I can be today because I don't know what 5 years or 10 years holds. Uh, and I think that that's what's exciting about it, is that there's unlimited possibility. Do you have like any messages or a takeaway for <laughs> those like young dreamers out there? Out of law school, instead of the law firm, the federal judge, I went to work managing David Crowley's campaign making like $12,000 a year. Uh, my parents were like, you are literally insane. You know, they, and then on top of that, I bought my first place in Over the Rhine, which at the time was about you know, one of the most dangerous neighborhoods in the country. And so they thought I was more insane for doing that. But um, it's because of those things now that they look back and they understand. Uh, I mean, of course, I took a risk. For sure, it was a risk. But um, it was a risk now that you know, if I didn't take, I would be regretting it probably for the rest of my life. Whoever I'm talking to or whatever I'm talking about, I end with the same two quotes. Uh, and so I'll share those with you all today. Um, the first uh, comes from my favorite movie. I'm gonna t I usually make people guess, but I'll tell you. So one of my favorite movies is A League of Their Own. Uh, and so it's a scene with Tom Hanks, who is the coach of the baseball team, and Gina Davis, who's the, the catcher and also kind of the star of the team. And uh, it's a scene where Gina Davis decides that while baseball is what really gets to her, it's what inspires her, what, it's what makes her want to get up every morning. 
it's just gotten too hard. That the pressures of our family, of the league, of society in general, it's just gotten too much. And so she goes to Tom Hanks and says, I'm leaving. I'm going back to Iowa. I'm going to you know, marry whatever her husband's name was going to be and, and have kids. And, and, and he says, uh, why? And she says, it's, it's just too tough. And the quote is, it's supposed to be hard. If it wasn't hard, everyone would do it. The hard is what makes it great. What that means is that if you don't follow, if you follow what you're passionate about, what you love, there will be so many times where it seems too hard and a lot of people will give up. They will go back to Iowa. Um, but if you don't and you get through it and you learn from it, then when you are successful, it will be that much better because you didn't give up on your dream. You didn't give up on what you're passionate about. And somehow, through lots of struggle and, 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 and obstacles, you got through it. And when you finally get to the point where you feel like you've, you've reached your goal, just how awesome will that be? And then the last quote is, and I'll just say the quote, just dance, da da do do do, just dance. Which is a quote from a Lady Gaga song, which means that, you know, in life, you can work so hard and you become the president or the CEO of a company or you change the world, whatever it is, whatever it is you want to do. But if you haven't enjoyed your life along the way, if you haven't danced, if you haven't loved the people that love you and, and find other people to love, then who cares if you were president or CEO or whatever? Um, because in the end, life's about having fun and enjoying it. Uh, and so I think it's always good to, no matter how hard you work, keep that perspective.